This video is about PCB designing for Proteus Isis. We are assuming that you already know the designing process in Proteus and simulation. Once you have simulated your circuit, you might find a schematic like this. This is a simple circuit that we would like to make a PCB for. For any circuit that you make in Proteus, you normally do not see the power pins of integrated chips. All of the pins are actually connected to a hidden net called power and ground. Because you want a port where you could provide power to your PCB, you must place a terminal block or a mail header or any other connection for the PCBs to get power. This terminal block is connected to power and ground as well. If this is not showing before, you could create it by going into parts, select terminal block you could select the size of the terminal block even here you see a PCB layout of that now we have selected the terminal block you place it anywhere you like it is not, not necessarily connected to anything else you just go to the terminals mode connect power at one of its pins and ground at the other. For the aids of understanding you could assume that this is that you would do for it to appear on the PCB and it would be connected to the VCC of your IC and the ground pin automatically. You must also ensure that you have selected the correct package for you each of the IC that you're using. Normally for any IC that you would have it automatically assigns a PCB package. Here in this table you can see the pin number and the associated package. This normally comes along with Proteus which has libraries for thousands of components. For some components like resistors and capacitors you have a choice of packages. You could go to the packaging tool, press add and see a whole library of packages. Suppose we need to change the resistor package. We type in resistor. These are all different types of resistor packages available. This is 1.2 inches long, 1.8 inches, 0.4 inches, 0.5, 0.6. For this PCB, I have used a 0.5 inch. If you select it here, it would automatically be assigned to all of the resistors in your circuit. Similarly, you could check packages for all of your objects before you go to the Aries design making software. Simulation components like voltage probes, logic toggles and other instruments are not shown on the PCB. So you do not need to worry about them. When done with everything in Proteus, you must netlist the circuit into Aries. Aries is a circuit PCB designing software that accompanies Proteus ISIS. When you have pressed this button, you would see this type of a window. You should select default template. Now this is the list of components that you have used in your project. The first part in the PCB making is to select the board edge for your PCB you must have an idea of how big PCB you are making and the type of PCB that you are choosing. 
normally students would use a single layered PCB for their projects. But Proteus allows you to design up to seven layers for advanced projects. You should select the rectangle button here and then go to board edge. Take your mouse to the zero zero coordinate this is the zero zero coordinate you select the board edge and you can see on the corner just above the windows clock that the size of this is increasing suppose you need to make a four by four inches PCB you would make both of these coordinates equal to 4000 by moving on Now we have precisely selected a 4000 by 4000 PCB as you could see in this space. The board edge has been selected. Now we must place the components. Go to the component list by selecting this button component mode. It is recommended that you first place the integrated chips because they have too many connections with all other components and normally smaller components would surround PCBs. This is one of the chip that we are using. Once you have selected the chip you can place it anywhere inside the board that you have chosen. You can press the negative key on the keyboard to rotate this. Suppose we place it here. This is another IC in our system. Now the green lines that you can see show you the connections that actually exists between the pins. You should always select an orientation for a component that minimizes the entanglement of these green wires. The lesser the entanglement, the better for you in making the system and you would have lesser number of jumpers on your single layered PCB. This seems to be a better approach for this. The pin connections from here could easily be routed to this location. Once you have selected it you could also move it by pressing the mouse key and moving it. These are the remaining components that you are left with. For each this is a male header and as you move it along you can see the green wire that are showing connections. Move the mouse ball to zoom in or zoom out. As you can see we must rotate this to reduce the entanglement. This is the best location. We select and place it here. The other header is placed here. I have now placed all of the components on the PCB board. This was a very easy task. You might have to revise the placement of the components many times before you finalize a PCB to reduce the overall number of jumpers. Once done with this, you must go to the design rules. Here you can see a number of design features. 
pad to pad clearance, pad to trace clearance, trace to trace clearance, graphic clearance and edge slot clearance. Pad to pad clearance is the shortest distance allowable between the pads of different chips on your PCB. Pad to trace clearance specify, specifies how close a track could pass from the pin of an IC. You must keep this to 25 for manual made PCBs. PCBs made in simple etching processes do not have a very high accuracy of printing. So you must have a trace to trace accuracy of at least 25th as well to keep on the safe side. But you could also have 20 or 15 in case of PCBs printed using computer processes. Go to the net classes tab. Here you can see that two layers are being utilized for this PCB. But if you are making a single layer PCB, you must select this to bottom copper as well. So no other layer is selected apart from bottom copper. The trace style must be set to at least 30. In the case of handmade PCBs, you could select up to 10. That would be very thin tracks, but it is not recommended if you are soldering by hand and making the PCB manually. Select this 30, then change the net class to signal. Again change this to bottom copper because all of our tracks will be in the bottom copper layer. Advanced PCBs might have different tracks in different layers, but we are not considering that for now. We have done the rules management here. We we'll press OK. Once you are done with the rules, you must go for auto routing. Auto routing is a very intelligent feature of this program. This feature allows you to auto route the tracks. The tracks data have been loaded from Proteus automatically when we netlisted this. To start auto routing, press auto router and then select begin routing. This is an intensive calculation process in which the software calculates the number of conflicts with our design rules and tries to find out solutions while avoiding all those conflicts. Now as you can see the entire PCB has been designed apart from one pin that has been left unconnected. This green line shows that this connection must have been made but it does not exist practically. So how do we come about this? We must manually route this and connect this somehow. So we go to this button, track mode, default track, and then select this pin. And as you can see, as I move the mouse, it automatically creates a track on this location. But as you know that there is no way that we can get out of this, we must place a jumper. We could assume the jumper to be a part of the top layer of this PCB. You should double click on this location and you should also see that the track has changed its color which means that this is now a track on the top layer of PCB. You should double click here again and now you are again in the previous track. As you move along it automatically maintains the design rules so you don't have to worry about anything. You should end the track here and connect. Now we have completed the process of making this PCB. You could view a 3D visualization of this PCB by going to the output and clicking 3D visualization. So this is how your final PCB would look like. 
you can even see the jumpers that we placed here and here. The tracks beneath are here. To go further and print out this PCB, you should go and select the print option. While printing, you must move the PCB to an appropriate location on the page and then select unselect all of the other options top copper only bottom copper needs to be printed along with the board edge bottom copper and board edge are all that we need to print this these are all the bottom copper tracks of our PCB and when you press OK your printer would print this on paper which you would iron on to your bottom surface of PCB and etch it afterwards. Your PCB is now complete. Thank you.